Hello guys, welcome to our channel once again. So today we are going to talk about uh, sample questions of data bricks certification which is for data engineering associate. Uh, recently I had appeared for it so I have a fair knowledge about kind of questions they are asking and actually I had also gone through the sample question which is available in Databricks site but what we'll do today is we'll go question by question and I'll give you explanation for each one of them because you might not get exactly the same question but question will be near about that so it will also increase your knowledge and you'll be able to pass the exam. I'll also give some uh, useful links for uh, training materials and other things. So stay tuned and let's get started. So let's get started. Uh, what I have here is a question paper which has about 45 questions. It is provided by Databricks and it is really useful. It actually gives you idea what all things uh, you have to cover as part of this exam. And there was some question actually came from this also. So I will go one by one and I'll give you, I'll try to give most of the explanation, right? Uh, let's start with the question number one. So what it says is which of the following describes a benefit of a data lake house that is unavailable in traditional data warehouse. So if you go through, go through the answers, the first answer says data lake house provides a relational system of data management. So uh, this is not the strength of a data lake house. Actually speaking, this is one of the weaknesses that you cannot create relational system. So that is not the answer. Data lake house captures snapshot of data for version control purposes. So yes, it does has capability in terms of delta tables to capture the snapshot and the versions. But again, this is not their main offering. If you go to data, C option says data lake house couple storage and compute for complete control. That is, this is also not a correct answer because compute is their major offering. Uh, it does have storage in terms of uh, DBFS, but the storage is mainly from the client side. So you'll have to either, either use AWS storage or Azure. So that will also not be the answer. Uh, D says a data lake house utilizes proprietary storage format for data that is also not correct because mostly it uses uh, parquet or delta format and both of them are not proprietary. And E says a data lake house enables both batch and streaming analytics which is actually most appropriate here because in, when you are using delta table or even uh, other uh, um, Spark APIs you can use it for both batch as well as uh, streaming so that is the most appropriate answer so if you look at the answer it, this question paper also has the answer so you can actually tally it so uh, the purpose is not just to get the answer right the purpose is to know why that answer is appropriate and why others are not correct so e is the right answer here now the second question says which of the following locations host the driver and worker nodes of a databricks managed cluster now it says data pane control pane and this thing so uh, before you can answer this right this is very important to know and this was one of the question asked to me in one of our interview also uh, so we need to know a little bit about the data plane and control plane so i'll give you a glimpse of that how it distinguishes so if you can see this screen uh, this is from the Databricks documentation. It clearly uh, shows what is Databricks cloud account. If you see the blue part of it, this is a control plane and this green part completely is a, a data plane. So what all things are under a control plane? So Databricks web application is in control plane. Uh, customer notebooks are also stored in control plane. Uh, jobs and queries which it is executing that is also in the control plane cluster management is in the control plane now what is there in the um, your data plane right data plane has the data plane in customer network so all the processing which is happening in the clusters the, all the clusters which we have created that is sitting in our uh, data plane apart from that the data set which it is fetching as part of processing right that also comes back to uh, data plane. So the important thing is that you need to have this thing in your mind because this question may come in a different format. It may say that, okay, customer notebook, where does it sit, whether it's data plane or control plane, or they may, uh, the question may be right, okay, jobs and queries, which plane it, uh, it comes in, right? So this is the important picture you need to understand and uh, remember this, right? Now, if you, let's come back to our question. So here our question says, uh, where does our driver and worker nodes are sitting whether it's data pane or control pane right now if you go back again um, to this architecture it says uh, clusters are in 
data plane it's not in control plane so don't get confused uh, it says cluster management so cluster management is in control plane but actual clusters are in data plane so the answer will be the data plane which is answer is a to a now the third question says data architect is designing a data model that works for both video based machine learning workload and highly audited batch ETL. So here again, they're talking about both kinds of load uh, streaming as well as batch. So which of the following describes how using a data lake house can help a data architect meet the needs of both workloads. So option A says data lake house requires very little data modeling. So this is not the appropriate answer because they're not talking about the modeling and modeling again is not the strength of a lake house uh, data lake house combines compute and storage for simple governance again we saw that in the previous questions also so storage is not part of that compute is the main component here data lake house provides auto scaling for compute cluster which is correct auto scaling scaling is there it's not wrong but here they are talking about both kinds of load right where they have streaming as well as batch so let's see the other option uh, the d says uh, a data lake house stores unstructured data and is acid compliant so this is correct this is one of the strength which uh, um, database is always highlighting and selling in terms of delta the delta is acid compliant so this looks very appropriate but let's see e e says a data lake house fully exists in the cloud yes that that is correct it fully exists in the cloud but uh, it can also so here uh, i'll say one more thing that in few questions you might feel like there are uh, some when more than one answers are appropriate but you'll have to choose the most appropriate right now question number four says which of the following describes a scenario in which a data engineer will want to use a job cluster instead of an all-purpose cluster so here we'll have to understand the difference between all-purpose cluster and the job cluster so uh, if you have already worked in data you would know that when you are creating a cluster right when you so when you're creating a cluster uh, that cluster remains unless you stop it terminate it or you have configured an uh, auto terminate right so th that cl that cluster is all called interactive or all-purpose cluster so those clusters are mainly used where you have to do some kind of ad hoc uh, queries or analysis your uh, bi team is using it right for querying directly to the parquet file or your um, databricks table but when it comes to running a job which is scheduled job which has to run say every 15 minute 20 minute or once in a day right in those cases uh, you should always go for the job cluster job cluster is something which gets created on the fly as as soon as you trigger the job and as soon as the job is completed it will actually terminate it so that actually saves um uh, cost uh, in the in terms of cost job clusters are cheaper than the all-purpose cluster so whenever you don't need a cluster for a long time continuously uh, you should not be using uh, all-purpose cluster you should go for the job cluster now let's try to answer this question now so uh, it says an ad hoc analytic report need to be developed while minimizing uh, compute cost, right? So minimizing the cost is correct, but if it's an ad hoc analysis, you will not want to create a job cluster, right? Uh, a data team needs to collaborate on the development of a machine learning model. So here also you would not be using a job cluster. So if you look at C, it says an automated workflow need to be run every 30 minutes. So this is the appropriate place because it's a job which will be running every 30 minutes and after 30 minutes suppose the job runs for two minutes or three minutes or five minutes after five minutes it will automatically terminate and when the next time a job triggers a new cluster will be created so answer c is the most appropriate here okay so fifth question says a data engineer has created a data table as part of the data pipeline downstream data analyst analyst now needs select permission on the data table assuming the data engineer is the data table owner which part of the data bricks lake house platform can the data engineer use to grant the data analyst appropriate access okay so options are repos jobs data explorer databricks file system dashboards right so uh, for this kind of, for answering this kind of question you need to be a little familiar of the ui so what i'll do is i'll, I'll quickly show you how the ui of databricks looks so if you go to i hope it is in my screen um without let me expand this
Yeah, so you, if you can see my screen uh, here, you'll see there are three different streams. One is data science and engineering, second is machine learning and SQL. So if you go to uh, data science and engineering, these are the tabs which are available. One is workspace where you'll do all your notebooks and everything will be there. Uh, we have repository when you are connecting it to any of the repository that is what you'll configure here. This is just a recent tab to show all the recent items. Uh, this is the data where you will see your uh, data right so this a data explorer this is a data explorer this is a tab where you will be actually configuring your uh, permission so the same thing you can see when you go to sql as well so here also it's a data explorer so the answer for that question would be data explorer this is a data explorer so answer is for question number five answer should be c you can see here now let's move on to question number six. It says two junior data engineers are authoring separate part of a single data pipeline notebook and they are working on a separate git branches so they can pair program. So here what they have done is probably uh, they are using two different branches to work on the same uh, same notebook right because two of them are working at the same time so they thought we'll create two branches but this is where Databricks comes and with a feature where you can actually co-author it. In the sense, same notebook can be opened by two different people and at the same time they can actually work on it. That is what the option says, uh, number B. Databricks notebook support real-time co-authoring on a single notebook, right? So that is what would be the appropriate. But if you look at number A. So yes, it does help in uh, change tracking and versioning. Automatically it does that, but uh, that would not help if you are doing uh, pair programming or multiple people are working on the same notebook. So B looks uh, uh, more appropriate. C says Databricks notebook support commenting and notification comment. So yes, commenting is there, but that would not help again uh, with more than one person is working. D says Databricks notebook support the use of multiple language in the same notebook. Yes, it supports multiple languages, but that is again is not going to help uh, multiple people doing it at the same time, right? So B is the most appropriate answer here. So question number seven says which of the following describe how Databricks repos can help facilitate CI/CD workflows on Databricks Lakehouse platform? Yeah. So here, uh, before you go into the CI/CD, right? Uh, we need to know a little bit about uh, uh, Git repository and how that is configured. So let me show you that quickly. So if you go here, uh, I've already configured, but I'll show you how you do it. So here in the uh, Databricks Data Science and Engineering tab, you'll see repos, and here you can actually add repository. So if you go here, to go back, add repo, right? add repo, you have to provide your URL of the repository. So I have already added it um, here, this one, uh, I'll go to the second one, shared pipeline, I'll open one of the notebook and I'll show you what all thing you can do here. So right now it is test, I'll say I'll add this something and I want to now commit this, right? So I'll go back and it will show me if there are more than one file that all the files will show here you can put some comment it will show you the previous value and the current value you can say commit and push so you just remember what all things you see here uh, it says pull it says commit and push it says create branches right? so branches can be created you can do the push pull you can see the history you can see the changes so these are the things which you can do so there can be questions which will be around this can we do the push uh, commit from uh, Databricks UI, can you do the pull, can you create the branches, so yes, these are the things which can be done and whatever you don't see here, that cannot be done here, right, so you say commit and push and you, if you go back to your repository, actually you can see these changes, so this is about repository, um, now go back here, so what it says, um, Databricks repo can facilitate the pull request review and approval process before merging. So yes, you can create uh, a branches, but pull requests you can create directly there. So that is not the right answer. Databricks repos can merge changes from the secondary Git branch. So that would also not be right from the Databricks. Databricks repos can be used to design, develop, and trigger Git automation pipeline. So Git automation pipelines will not be created from Databricks directly. So that is not the right. Databricks repos can store the single source of truth in Git repository and doesn't look right because Git repositories are, are supposed to maintain the version for each file, right? That is not very relevant here. Databricks repos can commit 
or push code changes to trigger a CI CD process. So yes, correct. So we have seen it. Um, you make the change, you push the code, the change will go to your repository. And if repository is configured for CI CD process, that will trigger there. So uh, E is the right answer here for number seven. Let's move to uh, number eight. Which of the following statement describes Delta Lake? Um, so Delta Lake, you must be knowing the Delta Lake, uh, the Delta format basically on which Delta Lake is actually based on is a, uh, a open source format right, for the storage. So what it says, number A says Delta Lake is an open source analytics engine used for uh, big data workload. Again, it's not an analytics engine, right? So A is not correct. Delta Lake is an open format storage layer that deliver reliability, security and performance. So yes, it looks appropriate. It is in a storage layer and it delivers reliability, security and performance. So yeah, B looks correct, but let's see C, A, D and E also. Uh, Delta Lake is an open source platform to help manage the complete machine learning life cycle. So it is not very much specific to machine learning, so this is not correct. Delta Lake is an open source data storage format for distributed data. So this also looks right. It is a data storage it can be used for distributed data, but not only for distributed data. right? So I think this will not be right. Delta Lake is an open format storage layer that processes data. So again, it's partially correct. It's an open source format storage, but it does not process the data by itself, right? So I think B is the most appropriate here. You go for B, so number eight. Uh, in number nine, they have given three different columns and they want to know uh, how would be the syntax for create table. So if you closely look at this, number A and B has table name as right so this is not the right syntax here it has to be the uh, open brackets right so a, b a and d is not right it has to be b c and e uh, and e again has with column so with column is not the right syntax so actually speaking to me it looked like b and c both are correct but this question paper has given answer as b so if you get this question you will go for p it has to be create or replace table, the table name and the bracket. I think it can also be written in this way, create table if not exist, that also works. But go for B in, if you get this. Question number 10, which of the following SQL keywords can be used to append new rows to an existing delta table? So yeah, uh, again update will not give you a new records, right? Uh, even delete will not give you union is used mostly for your selecting purpose so you can select it and then insert in some other table but i think here insert into is more appropriate so go for insert into uh, number 10 answer should be c so i guess i see that this video is becoming a little longer so what i'll do is i'll just break into into the parts and i would like to take your feedback as well yeah, so just give your comments uh, what uh, what what else you want to see in this what you liked it and what you didn't so we'll try to improve based on that and if you like it just um, give a thumbs up comment it and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe so i'll upload this part one upload this as a part one and then come with the subsequent part two three and others thank you